Hi, this is Stephanie Miller from The Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from my show on Political Voices Network. Oh, God, it's the best. It's the best. And I love the memories of bipartisanship and Republicans believing in facts. Yeah. yeah. Those were the days. Those were the days. Yeah. I mean, Jill, that's the, you know, we've had so many conversations about how this Republican Party is different than during Watergate, but it, it really is just, I don't even know the word anymore, just sickening, this Republican Party. I mean, this is, I, and I've heard a lot of legal experts, I, they said this is the most damning indictment they've ever read. I mean, just your initial reaction to it. Damning <laughs> is a very good word for it. It's really a powerful narrative. If anybody would bother to read it, and if you're too tired and lazy to read it, look at the pictures. Yeah. It has yeah. pictures, and they are damning. Pictures of boxes of confidential information, national security dangerous information, in the bathroom at Mar-a-Lago, in the ballroom on a stage at Mar-a-Lago, strewn around the floor. I mean, just look at the pictures. And also, everybody listening, well, of course, the people who are listening to you, I don't need to say this to, but all of you who aren't listening, <laughs> if you would think about substituting the name Hillary Clinton for Donald Trump and read this indictment, you would be going for a citizen's arrest. You yeah. would agree that she was guilty. Well, so is he. He yeah. did this. He endangered our national security. He obstructed justice. He lied. He involved his valet. Poor valet. Can't even get a lawyer who's licensed to practice in the Southern District of Florida and couldn't even enter a plea at the arraignment. It, it's really sad. And yet Republicans have not not abandoned him. Yeah. And that's even though he keeps losing elections. He's not a good candidate. He's going to lose again. Yeah. So it's not even in their political interest, let alone their intellectual or, right. you know, democracy interest Absolutely. to keep supporting him. But they are. Absolutely. I would only uh, take issue with one thing you've said, and that is lots of people that hate me listen, too. So they do hear this you. This is true. <laughs> oh, do they? Well, that's oh, yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. Um, but that is well, part I'm of... I'm talking to you guys, then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Jill, that's part of what is, I, I, I guess, just... Um, you know, so distressing about where we are. I don't know if you saw that. I'm sure you saw some of the NBC reporting about talking to Trump supporters. First of all, to a person, none of them read the indictment. They're just right. don't, you know, fake news. They did see the picture, but they're like, oh, but then Hillary. I mean, it's just there is so little understanding of the facts and the law today, I guess, compared to even in Nixon's time, isn't there? Well, the facts, I mean, I would scream facts. And in the old days, facts mattered. When the Republicans heard the facts, when they heard the tapes, when they saw the evidence we had gathered, they said, he's guilty. We can't support him anymore. And your father's running mate went to the White House and said, you have to resign or you will be convicted on the charges of impeachment in a trial in the Senate. And supposedly Nixon said, well, I have your support, don't I? And Barry Goldwater said, you don't even have my vote. Yep. So it was a different era. It was a time that facts mattered. But not even reading the indictment, not even, I mean, it's one thing to misinterpret it, but to totally ignore it. And yeah. that's, you're right, that's yeah. what they're doing. They don't what do you care. Mean? They just love him what? and the freedom he's given them to say hideously horrible, racist, misogynistic things. Jill, I'm sure you've seen you know, Rachel Maddow uh, talk about, uh, you know, obviously, her whole podcast about Bagman, about Spiro Agnew, talking about the government making a deal so that he could avoid prison in, you know, if he agreed not to, to leave power. Um, what do you think the chances are? What are the differences in this case, and what do you think the chances are of that? Well, in the case of Agnew, he pled what is called no low contendere. I'm not contesting it. I'm not admitting I'm guilty but I'm not going to contest this. And then he resigned from office as part of that deal. I do not see that at all. What I see happening here is that Donald Trump will delay, delay, delay. And boy, did he hit the jackpot with the judge yeah. who is going to let him delay. 
I think that at her first sign of bad judgment, and there will come a time when she rules in a crazy way on emotion, that Jack Smith is going to have to move to have her recused because they can't afford the delay. He will try to delay it until after the election. If he were to win, he would make sure that the case was dropped. Either that he, if he's already convicted, he'll figure out a way to at least try to pardon himself. If the trial hasn't happened yet, then he will tell the attorney general to dismiss the case. The same way that Barr dismissed the cases that had already been brought, where there was a guilty plea entered by General Flynn. So I don't see a great outcome here unless the American people rise up and vote in huge numbers and the House, the Senate, and the executive White House become democratic all at the same time so that we can go through what I think is demanded by our system of justice. There needs to be accountability. There needs to be a warning for future miscreants who might get elected, although I hope we'll have the good sense not to elect them. It's a possibility. So we have to protect ourselves. Um, let me ask you some new reporting this morning. Uh, Jill, Jack Smith could sidestep Eileen Cannon by charging Trump elsewhere, according to some legal experts. Um, according to the Justice Department and a tape recording of the former president, Trump took classified documents from Mar-a-Lago to Bedminster, where he showed off the contents of such records to others. Um, this reporting say not clear why Jack Smith didn't charge Trump with dissemination of classified documents. It's not clear whether those charges could remain on the table. Um, Smith could have charged Trump in Florida for crimes he committed in Jersey, although the Supreme Court could have ultimately decided that wasn't the proper venue. So it's possible the special counsel is holding back on the dissemination charge in the event the Mar-a-Lago case falls apart because of Eileen Cannon or whatever. What is your take on that? Um, I, I have trust in the integrity and the intellect of not just Jack Smith, but of his entire team. And I am sure that they carefully analyze making a venue mistake can be fatal. So there's clearly some evidence in the indictment that suggests that he knowingly was involved in packing up and removing from Washington. So there's a crime in D.C. where that could have been charged. There is evidence that he maybe showed it elsewhere and then he moved boxes to bed minister yeah. uh, that they were put on the plane and taken there. So that's another venue. But the right. bulk of the crimes were clearly in the obstruction, the retention, the uh, concealment happened mostly in Mar-a-Lago. So that is the bulk of the crime and under our rules that's where the crime should be charged. These what? others would be back up if something untoward happened. Right. Let me just. I, yeah. yeah let, go let, ahead. Yeah. I mean, just the, the statement was if Eileen Cannon, the Florida judge, assigned to the case were to seek to pocket veto the charges before her by, say, scheduling the trial for after the 2024 presidential election, the special counsel would be able to sidestep her tactic by proceeding with a charge in New Jersey. Well, it's, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Same thing. Is that saying it's a backup plan? And I don't think. That, I mean, it would be appealable if she gives too much delay. If she allows, for example, an argument of, well, I have to go to a rally, so I can't be in court that day. That's not, sorry, right. that isn't a reason for a delay. And those would be appealable. And I think what I'm saying is once she does something that is showing her bias, showing her lack of judgment, showing her, as Eric Holder said, former attorney general said, she doesn't have the intellectual capacity to handle this case. So if you think about all of those things, there is a good way to have a backup to take a case somewhere else. But I think they made the right decision to do it here. And I may be a Pollyanna, but I believe that even in a Republican jury, even with MAGA supporters on the jury, they will see the evidence and they will be convinced, as they were in the Manafort trial, yeah. where a, a MAGA supporter says, I had an oath to support this decision based only on the evidence in court. 
And so I voted to convict him on all the counts because the evidence proved that. Yeah. I believe in the jury system. And the, the judge, when you were talking, a directed verdict before it goes to the jury is the thing I worry the most about because that is not appealable. She yeah. could say, I believe that there is no reasonable jury that can find him guilty based on the evidence in this court. I find him not guilty. And take it away from the jury. That is not appealable. And that is something that would worry me dramatically. Judges very seldom take the case away from the jury. But she has done things that judges just don't do. So it is a possibility we have to worry about. God, another, uh, yeah. you know, fantastic legacy Donald Trump has left us, right? Just these a lot of these completely unqualified, politicized hacks on, on our judiciary. Um, let me let me get your take on one last dub. Your sister-in-law, Joyce Vance, said that uh, SIPA, the Classified Information Production Act that governs the case, includes an immediate right of expedited appeal. So if the DOG doesn't like a decision by Eileen Cannon, they can go straight to the 11th Circuit. Can you explain that to us? Yes. Um, the the decision, first of all, they selected, the prosecutors selected 31 documents, which are going to have to be used in evidence because they're part of the indictment. So they have ways of making those available to the defense without endangering our national security. If the judge makes evidentiary rulings on those documents that says those aren't admissible or that they have to be admitted in full, not in summary. That is appealable under a specific law for classified information procedures. And that, if she makes a bad decision under that act, it is appealable immediately. So that's what they're talking about. And Florida has what's known as a rocket docket, which incentivizes and demands that trials go quickly under the Speedy Trial Act, it's supposed to go to trial within 70 days of the indictment. Yeah, That doesn't usually happen. I'm not saying it's going to happen in 70 days. It's not. But it will. Um, it will go to trial faster than in state courts and faster than even in some other federal jurisdictions because of the rocket docket. Okay. Um, quickly, the uh, D.C. grand jury was also active yesterday. The fake uh, electors from Nevada were testifying. Um, I'm sure you've heard your colleague, Andrew Weissman, said, and I, I, I assume you prosecutors very rarely use the term 100%. <laughs> what he said is 100% that uh, Jack Smith is going to also charge him in January, the January 6th investigation with the D.C. grand jury. What's, what's your take on all that? Um, I, you know, I have always said that that is a serious case with very serious consequences and very serious evidence of his guilt and his knowledge, his intent, and that it is a valid case. So I, if I can see it based on public evidence, I can't imagine that there isn't um, more evidence that Jack Smith has. So I would agree that it is very, 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 very likely that there will be charges for the January 6th case. All right. I think if you said one more very, that would be 100%. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to okay. go. Okay. I, right. I, I was at 97. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Jill, thanks for taking time out in such a, a historic, in a bad way, week yeah. <laughs> here it, in America. It, it, well, it's historic in a good way yeah. because the accountability that we have been waiting for since 1974 yeah. um, has happened. And a message has been sent, and I feel good about that. And this was done based on the law and the facts yep. and not on politics, and I feel good about that. Yeah, and also it's always a good day when I get you in your Chicago accent to say fact pattern. That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly, fact pattern. And if we I can it. get you to say it on Wacker when we come to Chicago for Sexy Liberal, that'll be even better. <laughs> no, I can't wait to see you. Yay! Yay. D the, for the DNC. Hey. We will see you on stage, I hope. All right. I hope so. Yay. I hope so. I'll be there. Yay! Right. Thanks, Jill.